You might use a spreadsheet for a number of different reasons. It could be more to analyze some data. Perhaps you've got a list of products, for example, that you stock in a shop or online, or you might even use them to track projects and help people understand the actions they need to take with tasks in those projects. Either is totally fine, and we're gonna cover a few different examples through this tutorial. To get started, go to sheets.new in your browser, and that's gonna create a new spreadsheet. So this is what a blank spreadsheet looks like. We've got our columns, which are less from A onwards at the top here. And we have our rows at the side numbered from one onwards. And each of these little squares that you can see is called a cell. And cells are where we add information. And we use the column and the row to understand which cell it is. For example, this is cell E6. At the top of the screen, we have the toolbar with all the buttons that you might expect to bold text, underline, and so on, and some things that are more specific to spreadsheets. So we're going to use our first row as our column headers. A column header tells us what data is going to be in the rows in that column. We're going to start by creating a spreadsheet to track inventory in a shop. So I simply just start typing in cell A1. I'm going to put product name like this, and then press Enter to save that text into that cell. Now I'm going to use the arrow keys to move to cell B1, or you could use your mouse and click in there. I'm going to put quantity, I'm going to use my arrow keys again to go to C1, I'm going to put cost price, and D1, I'm going to put sale price, and in E1, I'm going to put category. I'm gonna populate this now with some products. Now you can either follow along with this, or you might even have some data that you could just copy and paste into your spreadsheet. And if you want to follow along with my example, you can make a copy of the spreadsheet that I'm using by clicking the link in the description. In Google Sheets, there's a really nice feature called tables, which makes us nice tables that are easier to read. So I'm gonna click and drag now from cell A1 all the way down to cell E21 to highlight all of the data here. And I'm going to right click and choose convert to table. Now that doesn't really do anything to the sheet. It's just made it look a bit nicer without me having to make any effort. So it's put a nice green column header on that table. And it means if we have multiple sets of data on one spreadsheet, we can really easily reference them in formulas later on. But for now, it's just making life easier and saving us doing all of this formatting manually. Talking of formatting, we want to make sure that the spreadsheet understands what kind of data we're using in each of the columns of this table. So where it says product name here, there's an arrow at the top of this column. I click on there. I'm going to choose edit column type and say text. And you see now the table has this little text icon at the top of that column. For quantity, I'm going to do the same thing. Click on the arrow, edit column type, choose number and then number. For cost price, click the arrow, edit column type, number and currency. Do exactly the same for sale price, number and currency. And for category, we're going to do something really nice, which makes life a lot easier. We're going to click on that arrow, choose edit column type, and then choose drop down. And now it's turned those words into these drop down menus for us. And now if I was adding rows to the bottom of this table, I could really easily just click the drop down to select the category of that product. Whilst we're talking about formatting, there are a few other things I want to show you. To show you one of them, I'm going to add a column at the end of this table. So I put my mouse over to the right hand side of this table and choose insert column right. And I'm gonna give this column a name. It's gonna be called description. And I'm gonna add in some descriptions for each of these products. But one thing you'll notice is that the description is quite long. And at the moment, I only see the first few words. Now that might be helpful. You might not want to make these rows longer. That's totally fine. But if you do, there's a few ways that we can see some more of the text in the cells when we want to. The first is, up on column F here, if I put my mouse between column F and G, these bars come up and I can click and drag to make that column a little bit wider. But in this case, even when I do that, it's still not enough to show me all of the text in this cell. So instead, what I'm gonna do is click in the middle of column F like this, and on my toolbar, I've got a button for text wrapping. So if I click on the text wrapping button here, I've got three options. There's the clip option, which is what we have right now, where the text in the cell just gets cut off at the end of the cell. There's the overflow option, if I click that, it looks like this, where the text will overflow past this cell on top of other ones. But if there's any information in those other cells, then this stops overflowing. So what I'm actually gonna choose is the wrap option. You see now all of the text is shown in that cell, and I'm gonna click and drag between column F and G again just to make it a bit longer like this. And now I can read all of those descriptions. If you do have more of a text-based spreadsheet, Perhaps, for example, you're creating a project tracker. You can format text as you'd expect to be able to. So if I double click into this cell, 
I could highlight one word and then bold that text with the button on the toolbar. Or I could click and drag to highlight multiple cells like this, so all of my product names here, and then click to bold. Let's get a little more advanced now by discovering your very first formulas. Formulas allow you to automate calculations in the spreadsheet, but so much more. Now the first thing I'm gonna do is right click on column F because I want to add a column to the left of column F. So I choose insert one column left. That gives me this blank column. I'm gonna make it a little bit less wide because I don't need it to be that big. I'm gonna give that column a title. It's gonna be called total inventory value and press enter. And now if I click on the arrow, I'm gonna edit the column type again and we're going to make it a number and currency. Now I'm clicking in cell F2 and in F2, I'm gonna put the equals symbol. Now, every time you create a formula in a spreadsheet, it's always gonna start with equals. That's what tells the spreadsheet we want it to do something magical. So in this case, to work out the total inventory value, I want to take the quantity and multiply it by my cost price. So after equals, I'm going to click on cell B2 because that's where the quantity for this row on my spreadsheet is. And then I'm going to use an operator. An operator is just a fancy word for wanting to do a sum. So if you want to add something or multiply something, for example. The operator for multiply, which is what I want to use here, is the asterisk symbol, like this. And then I'm gonna click on cell C2. Now I'm clicking to select those cells, but you could also just type in C2 if you wanted. That's all I'm gonna do for now. I hit enter and you see now it's updated F2 to $8,000, which is 10 times $800. And Google Sheets is really clever. So it's realized that I actually want to do that for this whole column. So it's suggesting that I auto fill this column. If I click the tick here, it's taken that formula and it's applied it to every one of these rows in this table. It saves a ton of time. But sometimes those suggestions aren't going to be very good. So if you do need to manually do this, once you've done the first one in column F here, you go to the little dot on the right hand side of that cell and you just click and drag down the rows that you want to fill with that formula. Now this works because every time I drag it, it updates the numbers in my formula. At the moment you see it says B3 times C3 because I'm on row three. And if I go to row 11, it's B11 times C11. Let's take the next step now and try adding together all of our total inventory values so that we understand exactly what our stock is worth in my pretend shop. So I'm scrolling to the bottom of the table. And at the bottom of the table here in cell F22, I'm gonna type equals, and we're going to use a function called sum. Sum adds up numbers from lots of different cells. Now like before, Google Sheets is really clever, so it's guessing that when I've typed equals here, I probably want to sum all of the numbers in that column. And it's right, if I wanted to, I would just hit tab, and then it's added that row for me with that total at the bottom here. Let me show you though how this would work if you were gonna do this yourself. You type equals, and then you type sum, and every time you use a function like sum, the arguments that you need for that function are gonna be inside brackets. And the arguments are just the pieces of information that the spreadsheet needs to understand the job that you're asking it to do. So in this case, Sheets shows me this help bar here that says sum value one comma value two and so on and if I click on this arrow here if ever you're stuck you can get an explanation for what that function does and how to write it with sum all I actually need to do is just go and click on the very top number that I want to add up which is in cell f2 and I'm going to drag all the way down that column to F21, and when I get there, I just hit enter. So same thing that it did automatically, but if you wanted to do it manually, that's how. Seeing as we're here on this bottom row, why don't we also add together the total number of items that we have in our warehouse? So in cell B22, I'm gonna put equals, and again, Google Sheets is predicting what I want, so I just press tab, and there we go. I know I've got 581 items in my warehouse. In the previous example where we did this manually, I clicked and dragged down all of those cells and it was gonna write the cell references. That's like A1, A2, A3, and so on. But because we've used this new table format in Google Sheets, what this has actually done has used the table and column name to create that sum. This is one of the benefits of using tables. So you can see we're saying equals sum table one, which is the name of my table. I can see it up here in the top left of the screen and then in square brackets inside there it's quantity and that's the name of the column so it's just taking all of the numbers from that column and then adding them together what that means is if I add a row between these two rows here on the left here I've got the button to insert a row below like this if I add an extra number in that quantity column for my latest row 
you see the total automatically updates. And that's how spreadsheets can be really helpful. Similarly, if the cost price of the laptop changes to say $500, you see the total inventory value will update as well. Let's now look at filtering. Filtering allows you to look at certain pieces of information that are on your spreadsheet to make it a little bit easier so you don't see everything all at once. And when we're using a table like we are here, this is even easier. So let's imagine that I only want to see the electronics in the data that I have here. I'm going to click on that arrow on column E, which is my category column, and I'm going to choose filter column. And you see down here, I've got all of the different things that exist within this column. I'm going to clear them so I don't have the check marks by all of them. And I'm just going to select electronics and then click OK. And now the data gets filtered just to show me the electronics rows in my table. And if I want to change it, I click on the filter button again. Maybe this time I want to look at appliances like so. Or if I want to remove the filter, I just click here, choose select all to show everything again and then click OK. That's how I filter data. You can do that with any one of those columns. If you've ever used a Google tool before, you'll know that real time collaboration is built in. But if you didn't, this is a really nice way to work with other people on your spreadsheets. So if you wanted some someone else to collaborate with you on the information on this spreadsheet, perhaps they're inputting some of the data for you, you can share it with them. Before I share it, I'm going to click up at the top here where it says Untitled Spreadsheet to give my spreadsheet a title. I'm going to call mine Inventory List. Then I'm going to click on the Share button on the top right of the screen. And I can just put another email address in here. I can choose whether they can only view, whether they can comment, or whether they can edit this spreadsheet. And then I can send them that invitation. And that person will be able to jump in and we can collaborate together on the sheet. Now you can apply all the basics you've learned to different use cases in spreadsheets as well. For example, this is a project tracking spreadsheet for a warehouse move. You can see that I'm using the drop downs in a status column here. And one thing I didn't show you earlier is the ability to do checkboxes. To insert those, just go to the insert menu and choose checkbox. Everything works in exactly the same way. So in the completed column, I could click the arrow and say filter column, only show those that are true, which would be complete. With project trackers, it can also be helpful to filter in different ways. For example, if I click on the arrow on the status icon, I can choose group by column. Now what happens is the table has changed. The first part is all of the items where the status is completed. Next is all of the items where the status is in progress. And then finally, for to do. And I can choose any of these columns to group by column like this. And one other quick tip, if you click the arrow next to the table name, you've got options to change the color to something that you might prefer. This was a really quick beginner's guide to get you used to the basics of spreadsheets. If you want a different example, check out this simple budget tracker tutorial that I made. By the way, I have a weekly newsletter where I'll send you one immediately actionable tip for using a tool across Google Workspace. It's completely free and you can sign up at the link in the description. If you've got any questions about spreadsheets or another video you'd like me to make, drop it in the comments. Otherwise, subscribe and I'll see you in the next one.